You know, I'm no tiling window manager guy. All of my workflows, gaming habits and basically all the software I use are better with a mouse and keyboard configuration. But there is one window manager that has caught my interest recently. And it's one that I neglected in the past, mainly because it wasn't provided for many distros. Hyperland. In today's video, we're going over on what Hyperland is, how it differentiates from other tilers like Sway, how you install it, do some basic configuration, and of course, my personal experience with it. And let's dive straight into it. Hyperland is a tiling window manager, which just like Sway, runs on the more recent Wayland display protocol. This comes with many advantages like better multi-monitor support at mixed refresh rates, less overhead for developers and better security. For those of you who don't even know what a tiling window manager is, here's a quick overview. So essentially all modern desktop environments, no matter if you are on Windows, macOS or Linux, use so-called floating windows. They float because you can move them anywhere, overlap one window with another and they don't affect each others unless you snap them into a certain part of the display. The idea behind tiling window managers is to take visibility and accessibility to the next level by dividing your screen into several parts that are each being populated by open programs, tabs or whatever needs a dedicated window. Some tiling window managers try to take even this further by being dynamic, meaning that they can automatically resize their tiles based on default configuration that suits most, or by what you set up personally. If we combine these functionalities with virtual desktops as well, then you get a pretty powerful and efficient desktop environment that is as customizable as it can be. In contrast to other Wayland window managers, Hyperland already comes with a base configuration that already looks kinda nice. It's animated, fully dynamic and has pretty good documentation. It's also well maintained and due to the lack of additional features that a fully fledged desktop might have, it's also updated quite frequently. In the era of Wayland, these quality of life improvements like VRR or tearing are very important. Right, but how do you even install it? Well, so here's the thing. Officially, it only supports Arch and Nix, but there are many distributions that support it as well through third-party maintainers. If you are very tech-savvy, then you can try to build it on your own. However, due to its focus on Arch and generally fast development pacing, it just won't be compatible with every single Linux distribution out there. Like on Debian 12, for example, forget it if you don't want to break it. Generally speaking, the instructions here are sometimes hit or miss. On Ubuntu, you need to do a lot of work. On Fedora, it's as simple as pasting a command. The installation methods are just very different. I'm going to show it to you on Fedora and only the way if you want to test it, not a full desktop replacement. Just follow the instructions, log out or maybe even reboot your system and select Hyperland on the login screen. Now, here's a little note. Hyperland itself does not come with all the things that you might expect from a desktop environment. For example, by default it doesn't come with a top bar. Now, from what I have read and seen so far, most just use custom templates, which they obtain through GitHub pages or links from a YouTube video, which already come with a solid setup. The problem here of course is that many of these scripts or instructions are being written for Arch or its derivatives. So if you are on a different distribution, you might need to look up the package names yourself. I personally simply cloned this GitHub page with the command line, followed the instructions, rebooted my system and there, we can try it out now. If you want to install Hyperland as your main desktop, then I'm also going to leave some links in the video description below, so make sure to check them out. Anyway, this worked pretty well. Now, tiling window managers are usually configured via a configuration file. With our pre-configured template, the hotkeys are a bit different, but luckily it gives us some hints. With a native Hyperland config, like I've shown you the first time, we would open up the Hyperland config file in our home directory with a text editor like Nano. However, as you can see here, this environment already separated the configurations into individual files. Let's open up a second terminal with the super and enter key and open the monitor configuration with nano in the old terminal instance. Right, so now we want to open a browser like Firefox, go to the Hyperland wiki, monitor and copy this command into our other terminal. 
This allows you to find out your monitor's identifier, the resolutions, VRR support and so on. We can now start to configure our monitor placements. The values at the end are pixels, so if you want to have your second monitor attached to your right, then you need to enter the horizontal resolution as the first value and so on. If you want to enable variable refresh rate support, then you need to add the VRR parameter and enter a mode which you want to apply. We can save our changes with Ctrl O and quit it with Ctrl X once you are done. From this part forward, there is essentially not really much I can show you because everything just depends on your personal preferences. You can add your own hotkeys in the user binds config file or edit the default ones in the config directory keybinds file. Adjust the way how the top bar looks by selecting one of the pre-configured templates, change your wallpaper and do essentially everything you want. Hyperland feels very smooth and its animations even render pretty well on a dedicated virtualization host. But there are definitely some things that we should talk about. Tiling window managers like Hyperland are really fun to configure. That is, if you're into that or want to achieve your ultimate configuration. These things can achieve much more than what is typically possible with a regular desktop environment. However, as you have seen, you need to configure everything yourself. With a template like I use, it's manageable. But if you use a distro that doesn't offer such a tutorial, then you need to find the dependencies and programs yourself. Might run into problems installing it or it doesn't run very stable. From what I have gathered using Hyperland for a while was that for a couple of weeks you always find yourself editing config files. Either because you forgot to add something, you misconfigured some stuff or there are just some minor annoyances. For example, I had issues with Steam, whereas the full screen didn't always work because Hyperland had trouble to resize it that way. Now there are separate solutions like installing Gamescope and running my games through that, but it requires additional setup and reintroduces some overhead again. The point is, the tiling window managers, or as a matter of fact even anything besides a fully fledged desktop environment, is not really meant for beginners. There are guides and the installation is definitely manageable, but if something breaks or you write your configurations wrong, then there might be some trouble. Now luckily Hyperland has some checks in place, but these do not necessarily extend to fractured configs. Hyperland or tiling window managers in general are pretty cool to use, but you definitely need to gain some experience with Linux first, especially when it comes to using the command line, since it's just the fastest tool here. Is it hard to use? Well no, but you definitely need time to learn it. In fact, a pre-configured Hyperland template is a great starting point. Its documentation is pretty good and there are a lot of people who use it. Don't let me stop you, try it out if you're curious. Because in the end, you won't get as much customization as you can get with a tiling window manager. Except when you start developing your own stuff maybe. If you've liked my short introduction to Hyperland, then please make sure to show it with a like and definitely make sure to also subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on any future Linux videos. Thank you so much for watching and all that's left to say now is good morning, good afternoon or good evening, wherever you are, I'll see you around.